I'm Josh. Uh, we didn't, uh, we forgot of all the preparation we were doing in our slides. We forgot to put introductions of ourselves in. So I'm Josh uh, with the OISF um, Open Information Security Foundation. Um, I lead our, our training and outreach efforts. So if there is anything I can help you with in terms of training or outreach or academic involvement, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, Jason will introduce himself later. We'll switch about halfway through the presentation and um, we'll also be in the Zeke Slack to answer questions or any other things we can help with. So please feel free to use that as well well. Um, so my job here in the first half of this presentation is just to introduce you to some of the features and capabilities of Suricata as an IDS, IPS, NSM, um, as well as some of the integrations, such as integration capability with Zeek. Um, in halfway through, Jason will then talk to you about the Suricata 6.0 release, which is the latest release and all of the new features that come with that. So to get started, um, hopefully many of you know what Suricata is, but for those that don't, uh, Suricata is a network threat detection engine um, that allows it to run as an IDS or an IPS generating IDS alerts, but then it can also do quite a bit more. It can do full packet capture and, 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 and file identification and, and a lot of other features here we'll talk about in a moment. Um, OISF then is the Open Information Security Foundation that is the 501c3 nonprofit that supports the Suricata project. Um, Suricata is open source GPLv2. You can find the source on GitHub. We'll talk about ways to install it here in just a moment. The team is, um, the foundation then supports the team full-time, part-time contractors that are doing uh, a lot of the core work on Suricata. Um, this team is very distributed. We come from many different continents and it also supports a very robust and open community. And in fact, you can find our discourse is our new forum where the community comes to help. And a lot of the very significant contributions, Jason will touch on a few of those here in a moment, actually come from the community as well as the direction that the project head, it heads. It's, it's really very, very community driven. Um, as I mentioned, different modes for a very flexible deployment. You can have it just detecting on traffic. You can have it blocking on traffic. So that's the difference between the IDS and IPS modes. There's a hybrid mode. There's a security logging mode that's totally passive. Um, you don't have to have it generating IDS alerts. You can still have it just logging your traffic. You can have it doing full packet capture or protocol logging. Um, it also has the ability to run an offline mode and process PCAPs, either a single PCAP at a time or uh, an entire directory of PCAPs. And I find this to be quite helpful when it comes to doing malware analysis. So um, here's a, maybe a little, a little bit of a busy slide in terms of what could a deployment with Suricata look like. Um, at the bottom left, we have our source of traffic, a span or a tap coming into the sensor that is running Suricata. Um, Suricata then itself has some inputs. The rule sets typically are the large one, maybe some block lists. Um, different rule managers are available. Suricata update is the primary that ships with Suricata now whenever you download a recent version of it. Um, there's some graphical ones though, like Sirius that is web-based. Um, the Suricata outputs, as I mentioned, full packet capture that can then be fed to Moloch or just archive for later usage, historical perspective and timelining in case you're responding to an incident or maybe troubleshooting something in the network. Um, its primary output is a JSON file, and then that can be shipped through via log stash or directly into Elastic. And then we can do things like put different interfaces on top of that. Maybe it's Kibana, maybe it's Evebox. Um, because that output is JSON based, we could replace our Elk stack with Splunk or anything else that could consume that JSON um, as far as providing that, that interface to query and view the data. Um, we didn't, I didn't put this on the slides, but we have a distro called Selks, S-E-L-K-S. We don't have a distro called Selks. Stamus Networks has a distribution called Selks um, that really is designed to showcase what Suricata can do. So that would be a great resource to go and check out if this is something that is uh, relatively new to you. Um, so some of the other major features, uh, as I mentioned, that is standard, standard based formats. So configuration is all done through YAMLs and it does support sub YAMLs. So maybe having a base configuration and sub configurations for different sensor deployments. Um, the output is JSON. So typically easy integration with other analysis tools. One of the bigger features, or, or at least one of the, the more uh, talked about is the multi-threaded and then some hardware acceleration, which is, which is available. Um, some native IPv6 support. There is auto protocol detection. I think this is a a really awesome feature. Um, a good example of this would be looking then, say you wanted to look for TLS traffic, maybe you're creating a rule around TLS traffic. Instead of saying, um, you know, alert TCP port 443, you can just say alert TLS. And then regardless of what port that TLS traffic is identified on, um, it can find it for you and can generate the alerts or 
uh, generate information about that TLS session. Uh, so it can still get that information about TLS, the certificate and things without necessarily having to have an alert tied to it. Um, there's other advanced support for different layer protocols, application layer protocols, HTTP, DNS, SMTP, TLS. Um, file extraction is supported across a number of protocols, as you see there. And you always want to check the documentation for your version to see what is actually supported. Uh, the file extraction comes from from, from rules. So you'd have to create rules in order to get the file extraction. It's not just going to start extracting files for you. Um, but it does have file identification capabilities. So I can tell you about file types, um, as well as create the checksums, the, the hashes for those different files. Um, some other major features here, we could go on and on and on. So I'll just pick a few. Uh, so Lewis scripting is available. You can also integrate IP reputation lists and GOIP information. Um, JA3 and JA3S support. Uh, a lot of the code is being, new code is being written and some of the older code is being ported over to Rust. Um, and then there are some SCADA protocols, although I'd have to leave that one for Jason to talk more about because uh, I don't know much about it. Um, here's an example of using um, Suricata with a with a Cuckoo sandbox. You'll see a lot of public sandboxes, any.run and others also use an IDS in order to generate their alerts. Um, becomes a very important part of malware analysis is getting that extra information about the traffic that you're seeing without necessarily having to analyze that traffic. Um, and here we can see if we dig into those alerts that were generated, this was from an Emotet document. Um, as I mentioned, some PCAP read digest processing. So this is great for offline testing. Um, I use it as a malware analyst quite regularly and that I have a system that I can feed the PCAPs to to see what alerts are generated um, external to a sandbox. And there's, a, again, a number of different ways all documented on how and you know how you can process those PCAPs, what, what's, what's supported there. Um, here's just an example of the output, the JSON output. All the data is there, alert data is there, protocol data is there, statistical data is there, metadata is all there, that eve.json. So that is the primary output that you, or primary file that you would find all of this information for. And then again, the tools that you have available to just process or parse that information. Um, there's a historical fast.log. Uh, I think it's still supported. It's just text-based for the output, but I think for most, most of our trainings and, and our usage anyway, uh, we're just using JQ to query, uh, command line utility to query that, uh, that JSON file. Um, mentioned this already, Circata can also do full packet capture, writing um, the, uh, the network traffic into a single PCAP or one PCAP per thread. You have some flexibility there, some options to determine exactly how you wanna do that packet capture. Um, installing Suricata is relatively straightforward. A lot of releases and different um, uh, package um, repositories. Uh, you do may need to add though the, uh, the Suricata uh, repository, if I'm getting this right anyway, I'm, I'm having a brain seize on this. Um, in order to get the latest version, a lot of the, the distributions, if you just do, you know, for example, on Ubuntu, if you just do an apt install, you'll get an older version of Suricata. Uh, you can compile from source. There is even a Windows installer if you want to do that. I went through that the other day. It, uh, it worked somewhat painlessly. Um, one of the integrations that is probably one of the most relevant to our, our talk today is uh, Community Flow ID. Uh, it is often desirable to correlate you know, flow between different monitoring tools. So great examples between Zeek and Suricata. So on the Suricata side, you can enable Community ID and Suricata's YAML. And this is just simply a Boolean value that you switch from enabled to disabled and vice versa. You also have to input a relatively arbitrary seed value. Uh, but this is what you then synchronize between the output devices. And on again, on the Suricata side, the community ID field is then just added to this Eve output. So here you can see in the Suricata YAML, there is the two values, the community ID and the community ID seed, some directions in the comments there. And then this is what the output looks like at the very bottom. You can now see that there is the community ID string that was associated with this record type, which happened to be um, for a flow event. 10 minutes on the money. Jason, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, looks like I have control. Okay. Um, am I on the YouTube stream? Let's assume I am. <clears throat> All right, my name is uh, Jason Ish. I'm a Suricata developer, have been for about, uh, I don't know, quite a while, full time for three or four years now. Um, last week we released Suricata 6. Um, it's a major release for us and it's the result of about a year of development uh, time from the Suricata development team 
as well as many community contributors. Uh, currently, it's still the top story on our news page uh, blog if you'd like the full, uh, full release announcement. Uh, for the major improvements, um, we are currently focusing on stability and robustness, uh, performance, support for new protocols, improvements to existing protocols, um, extendability, uh, we're looking at plugins there, and uh, improvements to the detection capabilities, which uh, means uh, the, the rule language for us. Uh, for stability and robustness, um, we have a long-term goal of failing better. Uh, that just means more predictable results when things go wrong, um, out of memory, uh, bad input, uh, such things. Uh, we have a ticket open for it, but we'll probably never close it. It just keeps going. Uh, as part of that, we are moving more of the uh, untrusted input handling uh, to Rust because it has more predictable uh, sort of failure modes in C. Um, as part of this, uh, our SSH and DCE RPC parsers have been rewritten in Rust, as well as the ASN.1 handling, um, which was a community contribution, uh, as there always seems to be issues in that. Uh, we've joined the uh, Google OSS Fuzz project, which continuously uh, fuzzes our code on the master branch, which we get uh, results for, and then we have to fix them because they get published uh, publicly. And we've improved the handling of unbalanced traffic, uh, such as uh, when traffic is only seen in one direction. Uh, for performance this round, uh, the focus was mainly on the EVE logging um, uh, output. The EVE logging is our variation of a JSON logger. Um, we, we use a new specialized JSON serializer rather than a library. We found it to be quite a bit faster as well as lower memory overhead. Um, it's specialized to our specific use case. It's not very useful as a general purpose JSON serializer, and it has no JSON parsing ability. Uh, we also added a threaded output to the uh, Eve log. Um, this means that each thread will get its own log file to avoid lock contention, which was something we were able to measure, and a more efficient flow engine in terms of CPU performance and memory usage. Uh, new protocols for this release include experimental support for HTTP2. Uh, of course, this depends on a third-party decryption device or library, which uh, is something we're currently you know, working on integrating with better. Uh, it includes parsing and logging of HTTP2, as well as some HTTP2-specific uh, keywords for the rule language. Uh, we'll do further work to sort of unify it with HTTP 1, so you don't really have to worry about which HTTP version you're seeing on the network. Uh, just, it will work and it's just HTTP. Uh, MQTT came to us as a community contribution. Uh, this includes parsing, logging, and rule matching. And likewise for remote frame buffer, which is also known as VNC, um, came to us as community contribution. Again, it includes parsing, logging, and rule matching. Uh, we always try to improve our existing protocol support as well. Um, SSH was rewritten in Rust, and we added anomaly and decoding events to it. Um, and support came from the community for the HASSH uh, keyword hashing, which is basically fingerprinting of SSH clients and servers for identifying specific uh, implementations. Uh, as mentioned, the ASN.1 uh, was rewritten in Rust. Uh, it's used by a couple of protocols. Again, a community contribution. And uh, DCE RPC was uh, rewritten in Rust and it gained the new feature of being able to log the protocol data. Uh, extendability is something we're working on. Um, we did initial support for plugins. Uh, these are dynamically loadable objects uh, written in C or Rust. Basically anything that can link with C. Um, initial first class support was added for capture methods and uh, outputs. Uh, we successfully tested with uh, PF ring as a plugin. Um, in terms of outputs, that's something that would let you take the JSON output and send to something other than a file, like a socket database at the other end or something. 
Uh, we are currently exploring other languages uh, to be useful for plugins. Uh, as we're also working on making the Rust parsers more modular in that currently uh, our Rust parsers need a lot of C glue code to integrate them in with Suricata. So we're trying to make them more like to just a Rust module you might uh, pull in and uh, register once. Uh, in terms of detection capabilities, uh, for us, that means rules. Um, every new protocol, we try to bring it with new detection keywords. Uh, we've improved the byte keywords and support for byte math. Of course, these come over from the snort rule language. Uh, we've improved transforms. Transforms are a way to take a buffer of data that we've extracted uh, from a stream and perform a transformation over it, such as converting to an MD5, which could then be matched against a, you know, a, a, a list of MD5 sums. And for flow bits, we've added oring of flow bits, so you can check if uh, one of two flow bits is set. Uh, this previously required multiple rules to achieve. Uh, I did mention community a lot. Uh, we think it's worthwhile mentioning that we rely on the community for many of our major features. Um, we, as the team, maintain the core, sort of APIs, logging engine, detection engine, and manage the build infrastructure. Uh, we try to enable contributors to contribute. This means that the community gets to do the fun stuff, such as add features. Uh, we get to do some of the fun stuff as well, but we really want to make it easy for the community to contribute such things. Um, another thing we rely on the community for is uh, information on the InfoSec world. We are mainly developers and not InfoSec professionals. So we need uh, people like you to tell us the challenges that need to be solved. Uh, looking into the future, uh, so maybe into the next version of Suricata, we're going to expand the plugin support. Um, ideally, I'd like to see complete parsers uh, protocol support being written as a plugin. Uh, cloud integrations is something we hear a lot about, um, integrating with TLS decryption solutions. Uh, Lib Suricata has come up year over year, and we're finally uh, taking a serious look at uh, making Suricata into a library. Uh, as well as integrating more with hardware acceleration and offloads. Um, this largely seems to mean BPDK these days. Um, I have thought I had one more slide here. It's just where to find us. Um, you can find us on the web at suricataids.org. Um, our community is mainly on a forum, um, forum.suricata.io, linked to from our main website as well. Uh, for any questions, um, I'll be in the Slack for the rest of the day and uh, for most of tomorrow um, until it closes up, I guess. Um, I'm there normally anyways, so you can reach out to me as Jason dot, or Jason Ish there. And uh, yeah, that concludes this talk, I think. Thank you.